Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, let me try to simplify rational exponents and radicals for you. By rational exponents, I mean something like this, where we have 8 raised to the 2 thirds power. This exponent of 2 thirds is rational. And by radicals, I mean something like this, where we have something like the cube root of 8 raised to the second power. Actually, it turns out that these two expressions are equal to each other. The value for each of these expressions, whether it's in rational exponent form or in radical form, is going to be equal to 4 here. If this is the type of concept that you're working on right now, you're going to want to keep watching this video. And instead of sitting here and just talking about all the properties that you need to know, let's try just using them in some practice problems together. Whether you just want to sit back and relax and watch how these problems are done, or you want to do them with me, either way, let's go ahead and do some math together. So to start, let's try raising 16 to the 3 halves power. So just right from the beginning, we want to keep in mind that we can separate this into two different fractions or two different values. So I'm going to write 16 to the 1 half power and then raise that to the third power. Again, we can multiply those powers back together if we needed to. Um, if you didn't know this before, if you take the 16 and raise it to the 1 half power, that's the same thing as taking the square root. So 16 to the 1 half power is going to equal 4. And so this is going to be 4 to the third power. And if you raise 4 to the third power, that's going to equal 64. Okay. So what if we were going to go ahead and look at this in radical form, the same problem, right? So if we have 16 raised to the 3 halves power, uh, we already know we can separate this. So if we raise something to the 1 half power, that really means we're taking the square root of it. So this is the square root of 16. If you're wondering where that 2 goes, the, when we take a square root, there's an invisible 2 right over there as the index. And we can raise this to the third power. So same thing as before, but we're writing this in radical form. If you take the square root of 16, that's going to equal 4, and 4 to the third power is going to be equal to 64, just like what we got earlier. The key to understanding how these two are related to each other is that raising 16 to the 1 half power is equivalent to taking the square root of 16. Let's try another one. Let's take 32 and raise that to the negative 3 fifths power. So in case you forgot, if you're dealing with negative exponents, we can easily make them positive exponents by just reciprocating and putting it down in the denominator. If it was in the denominator, we can make it positive by moving it up to the numerator. Then, just like the example above, I'm going to go ahead and separate this exponent into two different values. So I'm going to raise this to 32 to the 1 fifth power, and then I'm going to raise that to the third power, just like that. So again, we can multiply those powers together to get 3 fifths. So at this point, you're going to think to yourself a moment, what number raised to the fifth power gets you 32? And if you uh, think about it, hopefully you can come up with the number 2. So 2 to the fifth power equals 32. So that means the fifth root of 32 is equal to 2. And then if you cube this 2, that's going to equal 8. So we're going to have 1 eighth for this value. So while that's solving this expression in rational exponent form, let's take a look at it in radical form now. While the initial setup is the same, how we deal with the exponent is a little bit different here. So 32 raised to the 1 fifth power, that's actually the fifth root of 32. Again, this is just rewriting this in radical form. And then we're going to raise this to the third power. So this next step is going to be 1 over. And the fifth root of 32, again, is going to be 2, because it's 2 raised to the fifth power to be 32. And so we have 2 cubed in the denominator, and that's going to equal 8. So these expressions are the same. Once again, the key takeaway here is that 32 to the 1 fifth power is equivalent to the fifth root of 32. Generally, going forward then, we can go ahead and say that if you take a to the m over n power, we can rewrite it as a to the 1 over n power to the m power, but then rewriting it in radical form, this is the same thing as the nth root of a raised to the m power. As long as a doesn't equal 0 and m is a positive integer, we can go ahead and follow these rules. Let's try some more problems using this information. Let's say we have the expression of 5 to the 3 halves power, and we're going to multiply that by 5 to the 1 half power. If we want to keep this problem in exponential form, that's perfectly fine. What we're going to do is we're going to write this 5. And keep in mind, since we have matching bases here, we can just go ahead and write the exponents as the sum of their exponents, so 3 halves plus 1 half here. So as long as they have matching bases, we can do this. And if we add those two fractions together, 3 halves plus 1 half is going to be 4 halves, or that's going to equal 2. And then 5 to the second power, 5 squared, is equal to 25. If, however, you were trying to think about this problem in radical form, just so you got the practice in, then this is the same thing as the square root of 5, because that's to the 1 half power, raised to the third power, times the square root of 5. 
Keep in mind that this square root of five is really square root of five raised to the first power. So because we have the same basis here, we can say that this is going to be the square root of five raised to the three plus one power or raised to the fourth power. And because the square root of five raised to the second power is just five, that means that the square root of five raised to the fourth power is gonna equal 25. And if that didn't quite make sense, think about it like this. The square root of five times the square root of five is the square root of 25, which is just five. And the square root of five times square root of five over here is also just five. So five times five is 25. For this next one, let's take a look at the radicals first and then the exponential second. So we have the cube root of 16 multiplied by the cube root of four. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one together. Keeping these in radical form, since they're both cube roots, what we can do is multiply these values on the inside together and 16 times four is equal to 64. Now at this point, you wanna to think to yourself what multiplies by itself three times to get 64. And that value happens to be four, since four times four times four is 64. And while that's how you solve it with radicals, let's take a look at using rational exponents now. We can rewrite this cube root of 16 as 16 to the 1 3rd power, and we can rewrite this cube root of 4 as 4 to the 1 3rd power. One way we can go about this is that if they're both raised to the same exponent, we can multiply this 16 times 4 and raise that whole product to the 1 3rd power. 16 times 4 is going to be 64, and 64 to the 1 3rd power is going to equal 4, since 4 to the 3rd power equals 64. And a slightly different way of thinking about this is we can rewrite this 16 as 4 to the second power if we would like to. And you'll see why I'm doing that in just a moment, I hope. Um, and you can notice here now that we have the same base of 4. Now we can rewrite the first one using a power of a power property. So we can multiply those powers. So 2 times 1 third is going to equal 2 thirds. So we have 4 to the 2 thirds power times 4 to the 1 third power. And since we have the same base now, we can just add their exponents. So we're going to get 4 to the two-thirds power plus the one-third power. And since two-thirds plus one-third is just gonna be one, we have four to the first power, which is just equal to four. So while there's many different ways of going about this, hopefully it's making sense so far. For these next few examples, let's just practice our rational exponents a bit here, and let's try to use some of the properties, okay? So we have six to the two-thirds power, and let's raise that to the one-half power. So if you see something like this and we need to simplify this, just keep in mind, we have a power of a power property, which just states that we can go ahead and multiply these exponents together. So if we multiply this two thirds by one half, we can cross cancel these twos, these twos can become ones. So what we can do is we can rewrite this as six to the one third power. So in exponential form, that would be the answer. And if you wanted to write the answer, I'll just do the answer in radical form too, just in case. Uh, you can write that as the cube root of six. For this next example, let's take a look at three to the one fourth power. And let's go ahead and multiply that by 27 to the one fourth power. Okay, so they're both raised to the same power. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and find the product of their bases. So we have three times this 27, and then we can just raise that product to the one fourth power. So we can always do that if they're raised to the same power. Now three times 27 is going to be 81. So we really have 81 to the one fourth power. So we need to think to ourselves, well, what number multiplied by itself uh, four times equals 81. So three times three is nine, then nine times nine is 81. So that means that four threes are gonna make 81. So that's gonna be the value here. And just to help you get a really solid understanding of how we can manipulate some of these rational exponents as well, we can rewrite this 27 as three cubed, right? Three cubed is equal to 27. And we can go ahead and write, raise that to the one fourth power. And so what we can do is we can keep this three to the one fourth power in front, but then we can use the power of a power property. So three times a fourth is gonna be three to the three fourths power. So there's a lot, a lot of threes here. And now that we have the same bases, what we can do is we can add their exponents. So that's gonna be three to the one fourth power plus three fourths power, right? I'm just writing it out to be as uh, clear as possible here. So that's gonna be three to the first power because one fourth plus three fourths is one whole. And that's just gonna be three. So we just tried a couple focusing just on rational exponents. So let's try a couple where we focus on just the radicals. So if we take the cube root of 108, let's go ahead and multiply that by the cube root of four. One way we can go about this is since they are both cube roots, we can go ahead and multiply these bases together of 108 and four. So if we go ahead and multiply 108 by four, we're gonna get the cube root of 432. 
So 432 is a pretty big number, so finding perfect cubes inside of it will take some time. So let me go ahead and show you how I can do this with prime factorization trees. So this would be the prime factorization tree for 432. And for every three primes that you find that match together, we get a perfect cube. So these three twos together are going to make eight, which is a perfect cube. And then we can find that these three threes here are gonna make 27, which is a perfect cube. Finally, we have this leftover of two, so that's gonna not be a perfect cube, but we need to go ahead and write that as part of our product. So the reason why this is helpful is that we can rewrite this as the cube root of eight times the cube root of 27 times the cube root of two. The cube root of eight is just gonna be two, the cube root of 27 is going to be three, and then we still have this cube root of two, and two times three is gonna be six, we have six times the cube root of two. And just in case you were wondering, we could also rewrite this as six times two to the one third power if we wanted to write it in rational exponent form. Now, if you don't wanna go ahead and multiply to get large numbers like 432 here, let me show you an alternative method. So here's our original problem, and this four can't really be broken down, but I think this 108 can. So before multiplying these two numbers together, let's see if we can just break down 108 first. Looking at all these prime factors, it looks like we have three of these threes, which makes a perfect cube of 27. These leftover twos don't quite make a cube, so we can just multiply them together to make four. 27 times four is 108. So now that we know we can rewrite 108 as 27 times four, we can break this down into the cube root of 27 times the cube root of four. Don't forget after that, we still have this other cube root of four though. The cube root of 27 is gonna be three as we found earlier, and we can go ahead and multiply these fours together since they're not too big. So four times four is gonna be 16, so we have the cube root of 16. 16 is not too big of a number to break down, but I do know that there's an eight inside of it and eight is a perfect cube. So we could break this up into the cube root of eight times the cube root of two, since two times eight is equal to 16. So if we go ahead and keep this three and then we find the cube root of eight, which is gonna equal two, we have three times two times the cube root of two. And then finally we can multiply the three times two together to get six. So it'll be six times the cube root of two. Hopefully now that we've gone through a few practice problems together, you find these to be exponentially easier. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And as always, keep up the great work. I'll see you in the next one.